Ode on the Morning of Christ's Nativity, John Milton. This is the Christmas story as told by Milton. The Virgin Mary, by God's miracle, gave birth to Jesus, and this works toward a perpetual peace for all of us. Jesus, as part of the Holy Trinity, chose to live as a mortal man. The Heavenly Muse, Angel's Choir, is beseeched for a song to commemorate the holy occasion. The wise men hasten with lovely gifts, but they could be prevented from being first with a gift of song given humbly now. The hymn, it is winter and baby Jesus is wrapped in poor quality cloth and a rough built manger. Even nature is in, symp is in sympathy and the humble setting is echoed all around. God blesses the world by sending a universal peace throughout the land. All are in awe of the one time only chorus joining heaven and earth. If we could hear this wondrous sound long enough, we would live in the golden age. But this is not yet to be before the glorious judgment day. The dragon Satan will not give in easily. All manner of secular thinking and habits fall by the wayside with Jesus' reach, and all the humblest servants await to do his bidding. <coughs> Ode on the Morning of Christ's Nativity This is the month, and this is the happy morn, wherein the Son of Heaven's eternal King, of wedded maid and virgin mother born, our great redemption from above did bring. For so the holy sages once did sing, that he our deadly forfeit should release, and with his Father work us at perpetual peace. That glorious form, that light unsufferable, and that far-beaming blaze of majesty, wherewith he want at heaven's high council table to sit the midst of trinal unity. He laid aside and here with us to be, forsook the courts of everlasting day, and chose with us a darksome house of mortal clay. Say, heavenly muse, shall not, shall not thy sacred vein afford a present to the infant king? Hast thou no verse, no hymn, or solemn strain to welcome him to this his new abode? Now will the heaven by the sun's team untrod hath took no print of the approaching light, and all the spangled host keep watch in squadrons bright. See how from far upon the eastern road the star-led wizards haste with odors sweet? O oh, run, prevent them with thy humble ode, and lay it lowly at his blessed feet. Have thou the honor first, thy Lord, to greet, and join thy voice unto the angel choir, from out his secret altar touched with hallowed fire? The Hymn it was the winter while, while the heaven-born child, all meanly wrapped in the rude manger lies. Nature in awe to him had doffed her gaudy trim, with her great master so to sympathize. It was no season then for her to wanton with the sun her lusty paramour. Only with speeches fair she woos the gentle air, to hide her guilty front with innocent snow. And on her naked shame, pollute with sinful blame, the saintly veil of maiden white to throw. Confounded that her maker's eyes should look so near upon her foul deformities. But he, her fears to cease, sent down the meek-eyed peace. She crowned with all of green came softly sliding. Down through the turning sphere, down through the his ready harbinger, with turtle wing the amorous clouds dividing, and waving wide her myrtle wand, she strikes a universal peace through sea and land. No war or battle sound was heard the world around, 
The idle spear and shield were high up hung. The hooked chariot stood, unstained with hostile blood, and trumpets spake not to the armed throng. And kings sat still with awful eye, as if they surely knew their sovereign lord was by. But peaceful was the night, wherein the Prince of Light, his reign of peace upon the earth began. The winds with wonder whist, smoothly the water kissed, whispering new joys to the mild ocean, who now hath quite forgot to rave, while birds of calm sit brooding on the charmed wave. The stars with deep amaze, stand fixed in steadfast gaze, bending one way their precious influence, and will not take their flight for all the morning light, or Lucifer that often warned them thence. But in their glimmering orbs did glow, until their Lord himself bespake and bid them go. And though the shady gloom had given day her room, the sun himself withheld his wonted speed, and hid his head for shame, as his inferior flame, the new enlightened world no more should need. He saw a greater sun appear than his bright throne or burning axle tree could bear. The shepherds on the lawn were ere the point of dawn, sate simply chatting in a rustic row. Full little thought they then that the mighty Pan was kindly come to live with them below. Perhaps their loves or else their sheep was all that did their silly thoughts so busy keep. When such music sweet, their hearts and ears did greet, as never was by mortal finger struck, divinely warble voice. Answering the stringed noise, as all their souls in blissful rapture took, the air such pleasure loath to lose, with thousand echoes still prolongs each heavenly close. Nature that heard such sound beneath the hollow round of Cynthia's seat the airy region thrilling. Now was almost one to think her part was done and that her reign had here its last fulfilling. She knew such harmony alone could hold all heaven and earth in happier union. At last surrounds their sight a globe of circular light that with long beams the shame-faced night arrayed. The helmed cherubim, the sworded seraphim, are seen in glittering ranks with wings displayed, harping in loud and solemn choir with unexpressive notes to heaven's newborn air. Such music, as tis said, before was never made, but when of old the sons of morning sung, while the Creator great his constellations set, and the well-balanced world on hinges hung, and cast the dark foundations deep, and bid the weltering waves their oozy channel keep. Ring out, ye crystal spheres, once bless our human ears, if ye have power to touch our senses so, and let your silver chime move in melodious time, and let the bass of heaven's deep organ blow. And with your ninefold harmony, make up full concert to the angelic symphony. For if such holy song enwrap our fancy long, time will run back and fetch the age of gold, and speckled vanity will sicken soon and die, and leprous sin will melt from earthly mold. And hell itself will pass away and leave her dolorous mansions to the peering day. Yea, truth and justice then will down return to men, orbed in a rainbow and like glories wearing. Mercy will sit between, throned in celestial sheen, with radiant feet the tissued clouds down steering. And heaven, as some festival, will open wide the gates of her high palace hall. But wisest fate says no, this must not yet be so. 
The babe yet lies in smiling infancy, that on the bitter cross must redeem our loss, so both himself and us to glorify. Yet first to those ye chained in sleep, the wakeful trump of doom must thunder through the deep, with such a horrid clang as on Mount Sinai rang, while the red fire and smoldering clouds outbreak. The aged earth aghast, with terror of that blast, shall from the surface to the center shake. When at the world's last session, the dreadful judge in middle air shall spread his throne. And then at last our bliss, full and perfect is, but now begins for from this happy day, the old dragon underground, in straighter limits bound, not half so far casts his usurped sway, and wroth to see his kingdom fails, swinges the scaly horror of his folded tail. The oracles are dumb, no voice or hideous hum runs through the arched roof in words deceiving. Apollo from his shrine can no more divine with hollow shriek the steep of Delphos leaving. No nightly trance or breathed spell inspires the pale-eyed priest from the prophetic cell. The lonely mountains o'er and the resounding shore, a voice of weeping heard and loud lament. From haunted spring and dale, edged with poplar pale, the parting genius is with sighing scent. With flower interwoven tresses torn, the nymphs in twilight shade of tangled thickets mourn. In consecrated earth and on the holy hearth, the lars and lemur moan with midnight plague. In urns and altars round, a drear and dying sound affrights the flamens at their service quaint. And the chill marble seems to sweat, while each peculiar power forgoes his wanted scent. Pure and Balaam forsake their temples dim, and that twice battered god of Palestine. And Munud Ashtaroth, heaven's queen and mother both. Now sits not girt with taper's holy shine, the limbic Hammon shrinks his horn, in vain the Tyrian maids their wounded Thalmus mourn, and sullen Moloch fled, hath left in shadows dread, his burning idol all of blackest hue. In vain with cymbals ring, they call the grisly king, in dismal dance about the furnace blue. The brutish gods of Nile as fast, Isis and Oris, and the dog Anubis haste, nor is Osiris seen in Memphinian grove or green, trampling the unshowered grass with lowings loud. Nor can he be at rest within his sacred chest, not that profoundest hell can be his shroud. In vain with timbrel anthems dark, the sable stolid sorcerers bear his worship dark. He feels from Judah's land the dreaded infant's hand, the rays of Bethlehem blind his dusky eye, nor all the gods beside longer dare abide, not Typhon, huge ending in snaky twine. The babe, our babe to show his godhead true, can in his swaddling bands control the damned crew. So when the sun in bed, curtained with cloudy red, pillows his chin upon an orient wave, the flocking shadows pale, troop to the infernal jail, each fettered ghost slips to his several grave, and the yellow-skirted fays fly after the night steeds, leaving their moon-loved maze. But see, the virgin blessed hath laid her babe to rest. Time is, our tedious song should here have ending. Heaven's youngest teamed star hath fixed her polished car, her sleeping lord with handmade lamp attending. 
and all about the courtly stable, bright-harnessed angels sit in order serviceable.